Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to another Borderlands video. Today we got details on the next DLC which is coming out in December, as well as a few other bits and pieces such as an overhaul to the Mayhem modifiers and what that may look like. All of this information was revealed in this month's episode of the Borderlands show, but 2K sent me over all of the details beforehand, so I've got the grips of what's going on basically. I could break it down for you if you don't want to watch the full episode for whatever reason. The main bit of detail is on the new DLC which is called Moxie heist for the handsome jackpot. Now I thought from this clip that this would be opportunity but it's not. It's a derelict space station which has been turned into a giant casino by handsome jack of course before he died. Moxie conceptualized it and Handsome Jack being typical Handsome Jack stole it so now you're stealing it back for her so you'll be fighting a lot of Hyperion enemies there and also looters and hoarders that have been trapped on board since Jack's death. It's a brand new destination on the map with multiple zones which are very much like Handsome Jack stuff in the past. Dirty dealings and lavish lifestyles as it says on screen. You join the crew of eccentric characters to pull off the ultimate casino heist in a series of thrilling campaign missions, as well as having side missions that discover hidden secrets and strange happenings alongside crew challenges. You'll be fighting mainly Hyperion forces that have outlived Handsome Jack, as well as new never before seen enemies and larger than life bosses. And of course this is unique cosmetics skins, weapon trinkets, echo devices, and no doubt new legendaries as well that you can only get from this DLC. The main thing is that it comes out on December the 19th, and to play it you need to be at least level 13, basically as soon as you've unlocked Sanctuary 3 from the prologue missions on Pandora, you should be able to get it. So this all looks pretty good, the trailer's been playing in the background, and it's nice to be going back and doing stuff in relation to Handsome Jack and Hyperion without it being that Handsome Jack is alive kind of thing. We're going into some old territory and taking it back. It's a nice trip down memory lane. But I guess the main things I wanted to highlight and the reason why I wanted to make this video is all of the stuff that's coming tomorrow. The Malawan Takedown will be hitting tomorrow, which is a brand new raid style challenge tuned for coordinated co-op parties for four max level characters. You could probably do it on your own if you're somebody like Lazy Data as an example, but it's tuned to be multiplayer and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun multiplayer too. You also have restricted respawning and I think a certain amount of times that you can respawn, so you need to be very deliberate and careful with how you play this. From the sounds of it, it's going to be like a longer version of the Proving Grounds, less of a time constraint on there too, so you'll have to fight a lot of enemies to get to the final boss, which again is what I'm showing you on screen. There's some even cooler bits and pieces that I do want to talk about towards the end of this video, and also because it's been a while, I do want to give my impressions on where Borderlands 3 is kind of struggling for me right now in comparison to other games that are in this genre, and also where the hell I've been for three weeks and, you know, plans for 2020 and all that. But Mayhem 4 is also going to be a new modifier, it is going to be very different from the previous Mayhem modes, this isn't what I said earlier about Mayhem modes being rehauled completely, this is different. This version of Mayhem 4 will not have any form of player penalties, and instead will apply two random modifiers, one that's a bonus to you, and one that's a bonus to enemies. And also, and I really like this, in Mayhem 4 there are the very own exclusive batch of legendaries that you can only get in Mayhem 4 in comparison to other Mayhem modes. And I really like that, I think that's really cool. But when it comes to the future of Mayhem, this is what it's going to look like. Gearbox will announce Mayhem 2.0, which is a long-term plan to overhaul Mayhem mode with more UI support, new Mayhem modifiers that change gameplay more dramatically, playlists, new rewards, and additional levels of Mayhem to work through. But this will be revealed specifically until next year. So this could be a lot of different stuff. I'm glad that they've taken the feedback on Mayhem modifiers on board. I really didn't like playing with them at all. There's no reason to. Granted, it's been made a lot better recently. For those that haven't played for a few weeks, they changed the modifiers to be a lot better for players. For example, less chance to reflect, less negative modifiers. You still have negative modifiers, but they've been reduced in how potent they are. That was brought in for an event, and then they said, actually, we're gonna keep it this way for the future. So you can play Mayhem Free without being completely shafted by the modifiers, which is a really good thing as far as I'm concerned. Like Mayhem modifiers that make your guns and your load out worse. I think really sucks and it doesn't make me want to play the game, it makes me want to go back, go back into the game to reset modifiers which just isn't fun to do at all. Mayhem playlists could be pretty interesting with some more consistency so you don't have to reset them all the time might be cool. We'll see on there but another big area that I'm really excited to talk about is dedicated loot pools for bosses. There are far too many legendaries in the game that you can't really focus on. Like I said, you got the Nighthawk in, you got the Crossroad, you got the Laser Sploder. How do you get these weapons? Well you just have to get lucky 
lucky and hope that they drop for you. The best bet though is to farm Grave Ward over and over, which just isn't fun for the majority of players. So now, hopefully all of these weapons that I just mentioned and more will have dedicated bosses that you can farm them for. It also helps with trying to get specific anointed modifiers on your guns as well to make them a little bit stronger. And also like my most popular video so far was all of the legendary weapons that were found on bosses. That video blew up a crazy amount and it comes as no surprise because people want to know how to get specific weapons that are actually very good. That's what Destiny 2 does so well. How do you get the Recluse? The Recluse is amazing. Well, you need to go through all of these parameters and jump through all of these hoops. Borderlands could do with a little bit more like that. Too much RNG makes it feel like Anthem, which as we all know, had too much RNG stacked on top of each other and it made for a horrible playthrough for trying to get the right gear that you want. But I can't wait to do videos highlighting the best weapons that you can get and what bosses drop what. That's going to be a really cool thing to do in the future. Other good news is the bank space, of course, we know is going to be upgraded at this point. We just didn't know by how much. Has it been doubled? No. Tripled? No. Quadrupled? No. It's gone from 50 slots to 300. That's total, so you need to get all of the SDUs as well, which the majority of you probably have at this point. So that's great news, actually. There's like 200 legendaries in the game. Now you can fit them all into your bank if you want to. Of course, this happens as I get all of my like loot mules in check, all of my characters for pistols and all that jazz. But this is great. I wish this was in the game to begin with, but I'm glad that they were able to go about this. Also, great news for Sanctuary, there are target dummies there too now, so you can test out your DPS and your builds without having to run to find specific targets, which again is great for making content. You can sort of highlight really strong builds and how they work, so I'm super excited about that. There's other bits as well, overall UI performance improvements, so this might be to do with the menus being a bit clunky. Uh, performance changes I don't think have been announced yet. There might be tomorrow, there might still be more, such as uh, Vault Hunter balance changes or gun balance changes that they haven't spoken about here, but also the adding new vending machines to be deployed across multiple maps no doubt just before certain boss battles so we have the new dlc with an announcement on december the 19th which is looking to go back in time a little bit by fighting off some of the hyperion forces we have the takedown raid that's coming out tomorrow alongside mayhem 4 which is going to be a, a new version with its own exclusive loot so bosses will drop specific loot now too you have more vault space the game should run a little bit better with any luck and Mayhem is going to get a complete overhaul with Mayhem 2.0 coming out sometime in the future. This is perfect. This is really what Borderlands needed to come out with at the moment. I think my biggest problem with Borderlands is just there isn't an awful lot to do. There's no real challenge and unless you're somebody crazy like Lazy Day that's been playing the game pretty much non-stop, farming bosses the whole time, making terror builds which I think is a really interesting mechanic, but I'm not surprised that people don't like it. There isn't that much to do, and you could compare this to Borderlands 2, which had loads of stuff to do, but also Borderlands 2 had multiple DLCs that you could pick and choose from if you went to go play it now. That's what Borderlands is going to be like in the future, at least the third one, when we have new DLCs and stuff added on top. The base game of Borderlands is pretty good right now, it just needs to have more added into the future. And the game isn't suffering in any way, really. Like, And so it's understandable for people to play Borderlands 3, get to level 50, make the loadout that you want, and then stop playing. I saw Paul Tassi speak about this with Borderlands 3, where he was kind of like, I'm done with Borderlands 3 for now. And that's not necessarily in a negative way. That's not people being like, I hate this game, I'm going to uninstall. It's just, I've done everything that there is to do right now. I had a lot of fun, but now I'm going to put Borderlands 3 down for a bit and play some, I don't know, Destiny 2 or Path of Exile. It's a similar thing with Path of Exile as well, that people will just play that game for a, a season when it first comes out and then drop off and wait for the next one. That's fine. People dropping off and playing Borderlands 3 isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does depend on the content in the future if it can bring people back. I don't know if the Halloween event really did that. It was cool, but I've only really played it through a couple of times. I like the fact you can make a build around Terra, but Terra as a mechanic has really put a lot of people off from coming back. Again, much like Paul Tassi said himself, Paul Tassi being a Forbes journalist, I forgot to mention. So I'd be lying if I said I've been playing a lot of Borderlands 3 recently. I've been playing a little bit more now this week before the takedown to just make sure that I'm prepared. But the last couple of weeks, I haven't really touched it just because, you know, I was sort of done with the game for a bit. So we'll have to see what it's like going back. I'm certainly going to be interested in looking at YouTube views just to see how well videos now do in comparison to the launch of the game. To just get a gauge on how interested people are at the moment in comparison to launch. But Borderlands is a really dedicated audience. I really love the game. I think it's done a tremendous job. But I burned myself up pretty hard when the game first came out. 
making content. So as you can imagine, I've had a nice bit of a break. I'm really excited to come back to it. Speaking of which, I did want to mention going into 2020, Borderlands 3 is still going to be a big focus of the channel. I'm really excited to see what happens there. I am really interested to see what Anthem does now with the whole Anthem 2 or Anthem Next, whatever they're planning. As this channel started out being an Anthem channel and quickly fell off because Anthem was not a very good game to say the least. I'm excited to see what they could do and I may make a bit of content about my thoughts on that at some point. Depends if any new information comes out, we'll have to see there. But stuff like Diablo 4, I'm really interested in, granted it could be a few years out. Even Path of Exile 2 might be quite interesting, I don't really know at this point. For those that don't know, I do another channel. It was called Overwatch Central but it's now called Hitscan so that's been my full time job for however long. So there's been a big focus on rebranding that channel and making Overwatch related content. But again, Overwatch is going for a fairly quiet period right now too. So right now I'm just enjoying the break to be honest. This might be me considered waffling on at the moment, but I think it's worth saying because I feel kind of guilty that I haven't put out any videos over the past three or four weeks, but I really needed a bit of a break. It's been kind of exhausting keeping on top of two YouTube channels, trying to stream, going to stuff like BlizzCon and other events. It's been pretty ridiculous, but going into Christmas and the start of 2020, things should quieten down, so I'm pretty much taking it easy. But I can't wait to get into this new patch. Content should start up quite regularly on the channel again, especially when it comes to loot drops and what weapons you should be getting for the Mallow 1 takedown. Really excited to get involved again now we have something to focus on content-wise, and then of course, the DLC. That's enough of my ramblings. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two. I'm really excited for this new stuff. I hope you are too. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you then.